Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. It's a pretty cool day. I just read a good comic and I'm also just got so many more plans for my company, which I have to keep reminding myself has a name. <laughs> it's Plato Comics, but I'm, um, I'm prepping something that people have been asking for for a while. Although when it starts off, it's going to be very, very limited in scope. Is that I'm basically putting the, the final touches on uh, kind of like an Image Comics uh, uh, deal. Uh, it's going to be somewhere between what Image Comics does and what Skybound does. And you might be confused because you're like, wait, my Skybound comics, they have the Image Eye on them. Isn't it the same thing? No, 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 no. So as far as I can tell, I'm doing some more research. Uh, Image does uh, basically a $2,500 fee for them, you know, running it under their banner and doing the admin work and, and you know, uh, checking the print file and everything like that. So they'll do all the expenses of like printing and then they'll take $2,500 basically for the office, you know, admin plus their profit. And then the, the team gets everything else. Now, if you're walking dead, you get a lot of money. You really, you live really well, but I also have friends who have had not very well selling books and they end up splitting like a couple grand between like four people. I'm talking to like two or three grand between three to four people. So it's, it's, it's not even chump change. You're working for a below minimum wage. Then there's the Skybound deal where Robert Kirkman gives people a page rate, you know, so they can, you know, pay the rent, you know, stuff like that. But he takes a percentage and I'm trying to, I've heard varying amounts of what percentage he takes of the property. So I'm trying to uh, come up with something that's kind of in the middle. It would be, I would get a flat fee, um, uh, but I would pay you a page rate. So you're not starving for, for everyone. Even if you came up with the idea, I'm going to pay you a page rate. Uh, but then, uh, I'm not going to take a piece of the property, but I am going to take a larger fee. Um, and we'll see how that works out. I'll probably, um, uh, tweak it. But anyway, this is Spider-Man and Daredevil number one. This is, is a compilation of Essentially, the two issues that launched Frank Miller's career, it was the two issues of Spectacular Spider-Man that got him, uh, issues 26 and 27, that got him the gig to do Daredevil, and Daredevil, that made his whole career, and that led to him fundamentally changing comics. But I love stuff like this. So, um, first of all, I was flipping through this, and I go, wait, what's going on? Why is... Why are, like, the, the, the bleeds so large? Um, so what I think this is, is I think if you got the original book, um, like the page would have been cut like down here because these are really <laughs> huge bleeds on, mo and then you even say here, you go, oh, okay. So it's like the whole page They're they're not running the image out to the, to the edge of the paper. Um, what this is, is, um, uh, because those two issues were so much in demand it was hard to uh, find. This is, this came out in 1984, so this is like the the Wolverine miniseries had just come out. Uh, Frank Miller had done his whole uh, first run at Daredevil. Um, he hadn't quite come back yet for um, Born Again. He had done Ronin over at DC, um, but I mean, he was huge, but just fixing to become so much. Uh, huger. <laughs> um, but anyway, so this is um, the first two issues, along with something I don't like, which is some George Lucas scene. They brought in um, Mark Bright and, and Vinny Coletta to do these one, two, three, four pages as uh, I am just going to rip those out right now. Because what it is, like, they're trying to match the style, but it's not as good. It's also just catching you up on this this they could have caught you up in just this here. Um, I don't like this. I don't like George Lucas scene. And you're going to see it works. So you see how he's like grasping his hands and then he just kind of lets him go. And then at the end, well, this is how it works a lot better like this. Okay, so I just ripped those uh, pages out and now he's grasping his hands and then he uses his super strength, which is, you know, uh, Daredevil just has normal human strength of a very fit man and he breaks him away. So what happens is this really, really 70s um, uh, uh, villain. <laughs> it's funny that right here they call him 
rendered sightless by the masked marauder, by the masked marauder. And I was like, okay, so you've given his like nickname. What's his real name? I go, oh, his his the villain's name was actually the masked marauder. So uh, Spider Man is blind. Daredevil is obviously helping out. And you've probably noticed that the layouts and the draftsmanship, and especially the inking, and even the lettering are amazing. Like. You can pull back. You can still read this. Everything reads very well. This is a very, very, very young Frank Miller, like 20 years old. And he's already at this level of competence. Now, I have to say, this is two issues. The first issue is much better than the second one. I will guess that Frank probably had a little bit of help, uh, a little bit of doing layouts and things like this. And then um, also, he probably he maybe had a little bit more time. Maybe he had four to five weeks for the first issue and maybe four to three for the second one. So I'll mainly just show the first one, which is just really good. But you see so many, you know, great effects like jumping off the uh, the flagpole and then it's like, you know, doing this little animation effect. Um, there's this great, this this thing like uh, keyframes from animation, which people and everyone freaking loves this effect. Um, but you can see here, it's very, very solid. So Frank Miller, he did the, as, as much of a millionaire you know, uh, a movie director. He actually co-directed the Sin City movies and then he directed The Spirit, but we don't talk about that. Um, uh, you know, an absolute living legend and still still vital, still viable. He's early 60s. He could make comics for another 20 years, at least. Um, oh, you, you do see some stuff that isn't that great. Like, that head is in the wrong spot. But um, there's some there's so much really good stuff. So, so what this is, is he came in and it's actually better to skip to the, he earned his way. So what he did is he tried to get work. First, he couldn't get work. He got, he found, found a mentor, uh, Neil Adams. And then he just took any gig he could get. You want to do a Marvel premiere 49 starring the Falcon? I'll do a cover for that. I'll do Marvel Spotlight on Captain Marvel. I'll do Marvel Spotlight on Dragon Lord. I don't care. I'm excited about comics. I'm here to work. I'm here to learn. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. So with mentors like Neil Adams, Jim Shooter, um, uh, really hammering him hard on all of his weakness, says they built up uh, his strengths, and he got to at a very young age. And this this uh, book is really good. So one of the things is you know Daredevil keeps talking about is 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 um, Spider Man is just straight up freaking the hell out he's blind this is a huge deal he doesn't know he's a comic book character he doesn't know of course he's going to get his sight back you know within an issue or so as far as he knows he's blind forever and he's extremely upset he's lashing out he's freaking out he's you know oh no i'm fine by the way this is so steve ditko it's not even funny um this uh this panel right here like he's like no i'm the only one who could find him i don't know he's just like smashing into stuff almost walking off buildings and like it's this part i love uh, uh this is uh, again bill mantlo uh, i want to call it a couple people bill mantlo writes this frank springer inks it and honestly frank's stuff did not look this good for at least a couple years his first daredevil stuff is is very rough um it's actually technically a step back from the level of quality of frank's Springer doing some really amazing uh, inks and probably some embellishment, which is you kind of redraw it a little bit to help out, to help homie out. Um, so uh, you can see here, I mean, like these panels are epic. They're trying to sell. There's this funky 70s uh, 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 android called Tri-Man who works for um, uh, the Masked Marauder. He has these different forms. He's um, Mandroid bird droid bomb droid so this is the bird droid and the bomb droid. i don't know but i mean look at they're trying to sell like he's gonna blow up manhattan how many times has that been said and then but when you draw it like this it's a huge deal he says it will make hiroshima and nagasaki pale by comparison so then we get into some some good fight scenes and i mean look at that panel that's a panel that most people could not achieve after 10 or 20 years it's pretty much perfection now the second one is not as good I, I i'm thinking he had the training wheels off a little bit and you know neil adams is like hey kid you're on your own i helped you know i helped you do the layouts for the first one no you're on your own so it's good but 
not as good as the first one. Still, there's some really incredible uh, panels like uh, this one. The tension for this very simple Dylan is going to blow up New York City story is freaking uh, incredible. Miller put in the time. He earned his spot just like everyone back in the day had to do. Black, white, man, woman. It didn't matter. You had to earn it. And Frank earned his place in the comic book industry by taking any gig he could, by seeking out harsh criticism, by uh, learning, by trying, and just putting in the time. And then five years later, when he's like 25 and already a legend in, this, in the industry, they tell him they're going to reprint you know, his first two issues, and they ask for a cover. He draws two covers. Because he wasn't happy, because this one didn't meet his standard. So then he redrew it on this one. Even as a legend, you know, 25, but at 84, he was a legend. It was very clear that he was going to be an elder statesman and just a, a legend for, you know, all the whole history of the medium. He's still trying to prove himself. He's still holding himself to high standards. I did this one. I had this idea. It didn't work, you know. I see it. It's not dynamic enough. There. This is, and you know what? He probably would have done a third version if he would have had time. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. Your funny original content and an original lawsuit. Links uh, are in the description, and I'll have uh, more new and uh, old comics up very soon. Thanks. Bye.